Mrs. Lyford? Here. Mrs. Massengill? Mrs. Murphy? Here. Mrs. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Mrs. Starr? Here. Mr. Vashon? Will you join me in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As this is a one agenda item meeting, I assume there are no adjustments to the agenda. There are none. <coughs> At this point, um, I would like to open the floor for public comment. If anyone chooses to speak, you have three minutes. Please state your name and address before beginning. Good evening. My name is Larry Hartwell, 9 Puritan Drive. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of myself and no group. I represent no group tonight. Uh, the numbers and percentages I'm about to present are either directly from or derived from sources deemed to be accurate, the town government and school board, school department. Another school budget defeated, soundly this time by 57% of the voters. Reaction by the school board and town council, shock. This is a town that probably is the record for the number of budget defeats over the past several years. Might this suggest that their underlying premise needs changing? One town, one budget, which is a nice sounding slogan, is false. There are, in fact, three budgets. There's a county budget, a municipal budget voted by the, the uh, council, and the school budget, which is approved by the voters. Our elected officials like to misdirect the voters by talking exclusively about the town's overall mill rate, estimated recently at 3% which combines all three budgets. Again, the voter only votes on the school budget. Some elected officials like to say you cannot break the school budget out. Wrong, the school budget is funded by three sources, state funding, federal funding, and the local taxpayer. The public vote is simply <coughs> on how much in local tax dollars are to be raised for schools. Never clearly stated by anyone. The signs reading vote no, 7.4, simply were pointing out the fact that the taxpayers were being asked to contribute 7.4% more in tax dollars from last year. The so-called budget cuts discussed tonight will leave the school with $1.3 million more than they had last year. Yes, the schools will have $1.3 million more to spend than last year. We hear this myth, the school budget gets cut every year. This is not remotely true. In 2011, the budget was approximately $35 million. The budget before us tonight is $47 million. That's a $12 million increase since 2011. Those so-called little 3 to 5% annual increases have grown the budget by over 33% in that period of time. The school's home website page says the estimated tax rate is 2.99. This is totally misleading. The 2.99 represents the total of the combined county, municipal, and school budgets. Again, the public vote is simply on how much in local tax dollars are to be raised for the schools. The answer is $1.3 million more than last year, which is a 6.8% increase. I wish our elected officials would provide the kind of information that will allow voters to make informed decisions. At this time, only the finance managers of the town, the school department, along with smart taxes, can provide the hard facts. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Katie Foley, Three Lucky Lane. Um, so I was going to share this in um, our council comments and then with the abbreviated quick needing to exit quickly so you guys could take the uh, table. Um, didn't have council comments, so here they go. Uh, when I was a teacher um, at uh, Mahoney Mill School in South Portland, one of the uh, kind of favorite quotes I had on my board always um, to remind me, it wasn't really for the students, it was to remind me every day what my job was, was, and I don't know who, who says it, maybe one of you will know, um, tell me and I forget, teach me and I will remember, but if you involve me, I will learn. So for me, um, what I try to do in every scenario uh, in my life is I try to learn. And I learn by getting more and more involved. It's why I ran for office in the first place um, and uh, why I'm here tonight. So I do believe 
firmly and strongly in the one town, one budget concept. Um, I think clearly we haven't gotten enough people along, and I know that we'll never get everybody on the extremes. There's always going to be people on both ends, but I believe strongly that we can bring more people to the middle by getting more and more people involved. How we do that, I got some more thinking to do uh, on that end. Um, but for me, it's, it's that involvement and bringing more folks to the middle that is kind of the missing element for taking that one town, one budget concept to the next level. And I really believe for the health of our community, um, that's the direction that we should all be trying, trying to work together towards. Um, I will just say for the record, as an elected official, I was not shocked. Um, never once stated I was shocked. Um, I, I think we have a divided community and not divided uh, because we don't like each other, um, divided because we have different value systems. And <coughs> that's one of the things that makes this country great, but it also just requires us to listen uh, more often and more deeply. Um, so I encourage all of us to continue to do that. Um, none of us like where we ended up. Um, I am hopeful uh, that with your cuts, our cuts, and the additional state dollars um, that we're going to get to a tax place that everybody can support, and then we can start to work on that process again. So thanks, and thank you for your work. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? Public comment? Okay, seeing none, I'll close public comment, and that takes us to new business 6.0. 6 6 6.1, do we have a motion to approve a revised notice of the school budget for a July 25th, 2017 school budget referendum? I have a motion. Um, so the town council has uh, just voted, as most of you, I don't think there's any new people here, um, to amend both the municipal and the education budget for FY18 to achieve the estimated 2.99% uh, increase to the projected local tax rate. This amended budget reflects thoughtful decisions made by both the town and the school leaders. The school board must now vote to allocate those, the reductions. So I'm going to have Superintendent Kuckerberger sort of go through that, and then I have a motion. Okay. Okay. Um, so the process that we followed um, in making these reductions was uh, fully inclusive of the entire leadership council. Um, starting with Kate and I, really looking and seeing what new information did we have um, as we were later in the budget process and the budget season. So there are some um, proposed reductions that I'm sharing with the school board tonight that were very easy to, to make or to recommend. <laughs> and then there were others that were a bit more challenging as we took the time to include principals and um, directors um, from each department and each phase level to really think about not just how do we hit the goal of getting um, of reducing the budget by 236,000, but what would be the risks of each and every one of those decisions, and what impact will that have on our programming, not just this year in this moment, um, but moving forward. And one of the things that I've been saying uh, with our leadership from the very beginning of this process, starting back in late November, was that you know this budget really needs to be a step. Um, toward our vision, and so it was really important to us that we maintained that um, philosophy as we really started to think about where could we possibly make some reductions in this budget. And so I'll share those with you um, kind of line by line, if you will, and then um, have questions at the end if that works. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. the first proposed reduction um, was an estimated savings <laughs> per bids that were received for copier replacement <coughs> and service plans. Um, Kate Bolton, our business manager, along with Jen Lim, our director of IT, worked really hard um, to go through the RFP process and to negotiate new contracts for our uh, copier replacements and service plans. So we were able to realize um, a reduction of $39,000 um, from that work that they did. The next one, uh, was a very hard decision to make, um, but we've chosen to recommend a postponement of the high school career and academy coordinator position. Um, this was really designed to be a K-12 position, but this year the focus would be intense on the high school as we work to develop career academies and internship programs that allow all students to have access to high quality um, 21st century learning experiences that would prepare them for the workforce. 
Um, and so this is, uh, this is something that we know we need desperately. And if you were here at the town council meeting, you heard um, one of our community members speaking about the importance of job development for our economy, not just locally, but in, in the state as a whole and across the country. And this is an area that we really have to grow in Scarborough. So postponing this um, investment this year <coughs> puts us a little further behind um, or continues to keep us behind, I would say. Uh, we are trying to be strategic and think about how can we at least start to build that internship course um, that we know our students need so that they can have those uh, personalized learning experiences that aligns to our new graduation policy. So there is a very much a ripple effect of postponing this um, in that uh, we have to be thinking about our transition to proficiency-based education and how students are going to be able to demonstrate proficiency in all of the standards across all of the content areas. And we know that uh, real life um, workplace experiences is a critical component of that. Um, but this was a new investment for us that we don't yet have this type of position in Scarborough. Um, despite the fact that we do have career um, and education development standards for grades K through 12 that um, still need work in terms of unpacking and curriculum development and alignment. So the vision for this position is that over time we would be having um, opportunities for students as soon as kindergarten where we're either bringing in experts from the field or um, creating mentorship programs uh, that some of our neighboring districts like South Portland are already doing. So the value um, of that position in our, in our proposed budget was 75000 We also then have um, made the recommendation to reduce the grades 6 through 12 behavior specialist from a 1.0 FTE full-time equivalent to a 0.6 full-time equivalent. And so Allison Marchese, our director of special services, will be looking to contract services um, to support our students in grades 6 through 12 who have um, uh, intense behavior needs and supports necessary. So that's a $30,000 um, reduction. We have also uh, settled one of our collective bargaining agreements in the time since our last <laughs> budget proposal. So we were able to refine the budgeted amount by $32,000. And then um, we also have reduced our district-wide curriculum um, line reducing instructional supplies and professional development across the board uh, by $30,000. And so that will just delay some of the progress that we're making in terms of sending teachers to Teachers College to get that very specialized week-long training um, and other national conferences that we know are so important to ensure that we don't get stuck in a bubble here in Scarborough and we are really um, attuned to what's happening in education across the country and bringing those best uh, practices back to our students. And then we also reduced, uh, or proposing rather, a reduction in the athletics and activities budget by $30,000. Um, and that gets us to the 236. And this really comes um, through Kate and Mike's, Mike Legage's uh, strategic work of thinking where can we have um, a minimal, the, the, the most I don't want to say like the most minimal impact, but um, where we could have a, a, we could find some savings um, or make some reductions without having a uh, real emotional impact on our students, like eliminating a whole entire program or um, eliminating programming at a whole entire grade level or phase level. And so um, what Mike has been able to do was reduce the amount um, for uniform replacement. So we are trying to get on a consistent regular schedule for uniform replacement. This delays that cycle a little bit, um, but it does allow us to refine the budget by $15,000. And these replacement cycles are really important, not just in uniforms. They're important in technology or in facilities, replacing carpets, things like that, because what happens when you wait, you then end up with these really large gaps that you're trying to backfill. So it goes counter to what we know around incremental investments, um, but that is also one recommendation uh, for you to consider. And then we uh, were able to adjust the amount we had budgeted for ICE time um, because of the, uh, the analysis of the actual cost of what it was in FY17. And so that's a $6,000 reduction, and we, um, I believe, are clear or 
fully understand where we will be next year with ice time. So that was one that we didn't quite know where we were be going to be able to um, secure ice time. And now we have more information on that. So that's a $6,000 reduction. And then um, we are eliminating the funding for the professional development that allows um, our athletic and extracurriculars director to attend a national conference um, by $4,000 and then reducing the funding for the business secretary from a 0.5 FTE to a 0.4 FTE um, and that's a $5,000 reduction. So all totaled, if you were following along, that gets us to the number of the goal that we were set out to reach of 236000 So okay. I'll make my motion and then yeah. we can discuss. Motion first. Thanks. Um, so I move approval move approval to amend the FY18 school operating budget expenditures approved by the school board on May 17, 2017 as follows. Reduce the general fund operating expenditures by $236,000 and now the amended general fund expenditures budget will total $47,175,168. Reductions to the state required voter categories are as follows. Sorry, this is going to be a lot of numbers. So, the regular instruction category will be reduced by $116,284 for a new amended budget of $19,023,239. The special education line uh, voter category will be reduced by $48,608 for a new amended budget of $7,558,169. The co-curricular and extracurricular um, voter category will be reduced by 30000 so it will now be $1,115,212. Student and staff support will be reduced by $34,392 for an amended budget of $4,659,167. System administration will be reduced by $3,900 for a new total of $1,069,128. And school administration voter category will be reduced by $2,816 for a new total of $1,887,854. So again, the total reductions for tonight are $236,000. That's in the form of a motion. A motion, thanks. Second. Okay, discussion? Jody, do you want to follow that up with anything or are you good for a minute? I'm, I'm good for a minute. Okay. Come back to me, please. Becky? I just want to point out for the public that when we talk about reductions in, in positions, that the total amount uh, includes salary and benefits. And the benefits include uh, a health insurance, the main state retirement contribution, and What's the other one? Maybe it's only those three. But you know, when you see a sat, when you see a figure of seventy thousand dollars, that probably includes twenty thousand dollars in health care benefits and seven thousand and or more in state uh, retirement benefits. I don't think anybody's getting paid <laughs> that amount of money. And that, that applies to all positions listed. Donna. So, um, well, first let me just praise the leadership who's here tonight for the work you did to attempt to spread out the losses over numerous categories. Um, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't speak to a couple of these things. One of them is that career and academy coordinator. Because I watched all year long as this business community stepped up to join in an effort with the school system to talk about how can we improve the connection between our high school kids in particular and our business community. And I watched their excitement over the course of the year in these meetings in generating ideas, innovative things that could happen in our town for our kids. I also listened at great length to Mrs. Savaznik, a teacher at the high school, talk about the lengthy plan that she had spent hours on developing that really didn't have anything to do with the foreign language she teaches, 
but it was all out of her own desire and her own willingness to attempt to spend time in helping this group make a plan for our students. At the same time, those students signed up, by the way, for this course in the fall, and now uh, it'll be gone, essentially. I mean, I'm sure um, the school system will attempt to put together something that maybe, you know, hobble it together a little bit to make it look appropriate. But are those business leaders that attended that meeting all the time? You know, Maine Medical, Maine Research Institute, um, various people from different companies within our town, the banking field. I mean, and now essentially um, that's something that, that is, is going to be lost, which other towns near us have had for years, had for years going on in their schools. So I had to speak up about that. The other one is the behavior specialists. To me, this is a critical area. We have to have specialized people in our school district who can help our staff with special needs kids. Um, and if, if you're a parent at home and you've got a kid who's in special ed and needs some support emotionally, socially among their peers, that's where that support is coming in. So I hate to see that, even though I know, because from experience, I know what will happen here. You know, we'll try to piece it together. We'll have somebody covering up for the time of that person. And it's a critical piece that I hate to see lost. And the other part is that I want to remind our community that the school district already did a great deal of work with realigning the resources that they had. So that you, we lost a second grade classroom position. We lost a um, retirement, retiring teacher position. Uh, we eliminated one at the middle school, one core content teacher position. It le it, we left, lost at the high school uh, an open teacher unfilled position. So these are areas that have already been lost to the tune of $725,200. So it's, it's important for us not to be looking at just what's here tonight, but what has already also been cut in the past. And, you know, I just think that we have to be careful of this because in the end, I think what will happen is um, we'll see some significant changes coming down from Augusta that will bring us down under the, the 2.99 for our taxpayers, and in the meantime, the burden will be felt uh, for, um, for um, our teachers and our students. That's the bottom line here is why I see it. Yeah. Um, okay. Jody? I'm ready. Yeah. Um, so I agree that when uh, I heard the career position, that was the one that sort of got me. Um, I think the superintendent, and, and what I want to be clear about tonight is I feel very strongly that the superintendent has, has made strategic cuts along the way, and the easy thing to do would be to, to cut an entire program or get rid of a, a large um, section of, of positions or something. That's the easy cut. Making small strategic cuts, um, it's been referred to as their token cuts. And I absolutely disagree. So what I prepared for tonight was to sort of walk you through what those so-called token cuts have been. Um, the first reading, we started out with a $48 million budget, gross educational budget. And then between the first reading and the second reading, um, the estimate for insurance came in, and we were able to save $250,000, $51,000. So then the second reading came, and it was decided that there was a post postponement shift from capital improvement for a tech refresh of $100,000. What this is, is um, in years past, it's always been in the CIP budget. It's always been a capital improvement project. But over the last few years, we have moved that um, program into the operating budget. So it's increasing our operating budget, but it, we felt like it was the right thing to do. So that was... Um, an intentional decision that we were making. But seeing funding and, and how it was coming down from Augusta, it just didn't make sense. And both the town council finance committee and the school board finance committee agreed that this just wasn't the year to, to continue that. So 
that got shifted back to uh, capital improvement. We reduced new investment pro uh, proposal for an athletic trainer. Um, ha it was a part-time position that saved $23,000. Now, that may seem like a token cut, but concussions are on the rise. We have middle school uh, sports, seventh and eighth grade. So our trainer is working double time and has more and more kids coming into his office with concussions, with issues, and we're asking him to do more with less. So it's not a token cut, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to refine salary projections. First go around, we reduced more staff development to the tune of $15,000. Um, keep in mind, that's the first one because you're gonna hear that a lot along the way. It's gonna sound like a broken record. Um, so none of these are token cuts in my opinion and I think they'll be felt for many years. I think our staff and our students are gonna be the ones to feel it. Then the Joint Finance Committee and um, asked the town manager and the superintendent to go back and find more reductions. So our facilities and maintenance department was able to find about $10,000 in delayed maintenance of vehicles and furniture replacement. Um, K2 and Wentworth, re their uh, supply lines were reduced, as you heard Will, uh, Councilor Rowan say, the last meeting, those were reduced. Now that may seem like a token cut because it's only $3,920, or $3, but ask your kid's first grade teacher how much they already spend to get crayons and tissues and markers that they're spending out of their pocket or they're asking their parents um, in that classroom to pay. It's not a token cut. The middle school eliminated additional funding for um, field trips. Again, middle school is a huge change for students where they're no longer doing recess. They're, it's, a, it's an intense new learning environment. And so to be able to give those kids a hand, hands-on learning experience is really critical at that age group. Not a token cut in my position, in my opinion. Um, high school textbook lines were reduced by 10% in deferred math book purchase. It was only 7,000, but these are strategic small cuts that our leadership felt that they could make without impacting our students too much. So that was <coughs> the second round, I think we asked them <coughs> to go back and cut. Um, there was more professional development cut to the tune of $22,000. Um, education is changing very rapidly and we need our teachers to keep up with that and so professional development is the way that they can do that and ultimately benefits our kids. Uh, K2 eliminated one foster grandparent eight corners. High school will leave a math teacher position unfilled to the tune of $75,000. Not a token cut, one less math, math teacher. Was carefully considered by that leadership council. So these are things that we can eliminate but they're not token cuts, they have an impact and we will feel that for years to come. Um, special ed, we, were eight, uh, we had a student return to the district, um, so we needed to increase um, ed tech. But then we were, also, we were also able to reduce our out of district tuition, so it offset each other. Um, that brought the school expenditures to 3.38 percent and would have resulted in a tax increase of 3.49%. That obviously did not pass, so we're looking at more reductions. Um, you've, you've heard these reductions. They're not um, token cuts. There's a lot more professional development in, in here getting cut. 30,000 district-wide, um, athletics and activities, another, six, or another four grand. These are all major decisions that have been made and thought out they're not just token cuts. So I appreciate the work that you've done and I will, I will support these changes, but I, I think it's time for this community to understand that although they may have small numbers next to them, they have a ripple effect and major impact on our students and on our staff. Um, and as we've talked about, our staff is already doing a lot more for a lot less. Mm -hmm. So the one thing I would add to, you mentioned a couple times, like if they look like small numbers, that really should bring awareness to all of us to how um, tightly budgeted those discretionary accounts already are. And so the reason you're seeing small reductions here and there is because, again, we're trying to, we're trying to ensure that we're not having to wipe out or eliminate a whole entire program or um, 
you know, in increased class sizes by a huge amount in one particular grade level. Um, and that really if 76% of our budget is human resources, there's, there's not a lot of other places to go in terms of um, finding reductions. There's also something for us to be thinking about as we're moving forward. Um, and then also I would just want to emphasize that when we're looking at our education gross budget now after this final or after this next reduction, um, it's, that is 2.89 percent, but our, our non-tax revenue is still a, a negative 17.4 percent. And so that's where we're getting the 6.8 percent education net budget. Um, that leads us to a 2.99 percent tax increase. Jackie. To the chair, uh, may I ask Mr. Legage what is the current contribution P parents are making uh, to the athletic and co-curricular program, rough estimate? Um, well, it's all the time. Sorry to put you on the spot, but that way we can my, all hear you. My point <laughs> is that parents are really supporting our athletic and extracurricular programs. There's a number of um, steps to your question. Correct. There's booster clubs, which we have um, almost 30 different booster clubs for athletics and student activities. And we also have the student activity fees Correct. that students pay. So. I would say that our parent um, supports somewhere between three and five hundred thousand dollars for athletics and student activities. Thank you very much. Yep. And the Education Foundation has been supporting programs and teachers to the tune of. Oh, I don't well, know the exact amount. It depends. A season, <coughs> yeah, so about fifty thousand a year. One hundred and fifty, probably over the lifetime. So it's not like the parents aren't making a contribution over and above uh, their taxes. And I think it's important for people to understand that. Um, <coughs> I'm going to say some things. It's going to get me written up, but um, whatever. So the voters said no to a number. And that number was not acceptable. Okay? So we have a new source of revenue coming in. So the number, without doing anything, is already going to be less. We've made these cuts here and there, everywhere we can with, I'll continue to call it budget, budget wizardry because that's what it is, because there was no place to find extra money anywhere. Just to reiterate what the superintendent said, they're small dollar amounts because there were no dollar amounts big enough to make an impact by cutting a whole program. We wouldn't want to do that anyway. So we get this additional money from the state, labeled for education. What a farce that is, because we're not allowed to use that money. It's only being um, available to us, to us this year, 50% as tax relief, which great. We will relieve the tax burden with 50%. We already had that agreement before it was mandated by the state. The other half can only be used <coughs> to further reduce taxes. So again, that could be 100% of this additional education money not going to education programming at all. We could also put money into <coughs> a school capital reserve account for capital projects. Makes sense, we could save it for next year. We don't know what's coming up for capital projects. We know we do the tech refresh. We know there are projects that we have pulled into the operating budget that. Uh, we've been trying to get out of capital, but maybe they're going to go back if we can put it in this capital reserve. Or we could increase expenditures. That would be amazing. And 95% <coughs> of districts in the state, I guarantee you, that's what they're doing with that money. But we couldn't even dream of doing that here. Because every dollar we spend in Scarborough on schools is criticized every time. We, there's not another municipal department that has people <coughs> making philosophical arguments against spending, that they don't want a, that portion of their tax dollars going to the fire department or public works or paving. No one ever stands up and says, the percent of our, our tax dollars going to that budget is too high, and we say no. 
but it happens every time we have a school vote in Scarborough. That's appalling and shameful. Make sure we're getting all this in. I'm telling you it's shameful that that's the attitude about supporting schools in this town. You can say you support schools left and right, but if you vote no on a modest increase in taxes of 3.49% because you don't like that it's a 7.4% increase of the tax dollars of the whole budget being spent, that's splitting hairs. Sorry, that's what it is. Um, we are going to get that percentage down without doing anything, but now we're reducing it even further. That number is going to be a minuscule. And again, we are one of four communities in the state that had a budget fail. And I assure you, we do not have the highest spending on anything in the state. Um, your mill rate is lower than every surrounding community, and every surrounding community supports their schools. I think they embrace the notion of community a little bit better than we do. So I will support these cuts because we don't have a choice. Um, it's disappointing every single time we have to do it. It's really getting old. Um, I really hope that people will come out and support the budget. Um, now we can say certainly that this is going to be less than a 2% increase. That's low. That's predictable um, as it was before. I'm just really hoping this is the one that can do it this time. Um, people like to talk about increased school budgets while completely ignoring the lack of revenue, revenue that we have no control over. And we know that we are one department of an entire town, and the revenues in almost every other department have had huge increases. So for us to take the full brunt of it every time and say that we don't know how to manage money or to budget, also getting very old, because we do. And our leadership council is amazing, coming up with savings where they do before it even comes out for the first vote. Amazing. Um, again, we do not have fluff. We're not moving stuff around. There's no hiding things. There's no like trying to protect precious uh, programs that we can't bear to part with. There are none of those left. So thank God we have teachers and administrators willing to work in this town because they could be making a lot money, a lot more money other places. And if people start moving out because they want better programming for their schools, I would not blame them because it's a fact. You can write it up however you want in the blog. That's a fact. So I support it, but I'm very disappointed to have to do it. Jackie? Yes, I, would, I would like to thank uh, Superintendent Julie Kuchenberger in her first effort with the school budget in Scarborough and the leadership she has provided for our leadership team because there is none better, in my opinion, than the leaders we have in this town who are taking care of our children in the school board and especially the finance committee the work you've done working with the council and the council's finance committee the support from the town council and the town manager for this budget through the process it is one town we've worked hard we're working harder still for our children, and let us hope this will be satisfactory, if not perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? You don't have to. Anything there? Um, I just, I just want to say that I appreciate the Leadership Council and Superintendent Kuchenberger as well. I think they've done an amazing job with what they have, and I, I feel like in Scarborough, it's an amazing bargain that we get for, you know, the, the education our students get in Scarborough is, is amazing. And, but yet we do deal with budgets that keep decreasing. And, um, and I think that's, and I, and, I, and I do believe in the one town because I, I believe that there is monies in the town that that goes to support schools just as it goes to support everything else. So I do believe we are one town. And and I want to continue that. So thank you. Thanks, Sam. Terry. Um, and I also want to thank the leadership team and um, our central office staff and all the work that they've put in. Um, it's really been above and beyond and exhausting, I'm sure. And I really appreciate that, um, like Jody went through and enumerated all the cuts, maybe we're not making a big 
splashy cut that would get everyone's attention and pull on emotional heartstrings. Um, but these are really impactful. Um, a few months ago on our Facebook page, we had highlighted some of those community business connections and some of our students are already benefiting from that in special ed and some of our gifted and talented kids are also benefiting from those community internship kind of connections. And the response that we got was, what about all the rest of the kids? And this $75,000 savings right here is the rest of those kids. That's what, that's what we're losing there. Um, and I think that it's not just comparing services, like Kelly was saying, like parents have a choice. Um, my family has a choice. We don't have to live in Scarborough. We love Scarborough. We want to live here. But it's not just comparing the services we're getting in the schools. It's also just the exhaustion of fighting for your school budget every single year. It's ridiculous. Um, and, you know, every year I spend a little bit more time on <laughs> the realtor pages, and, and I'm somebody who obviously believes in schools and will fight for budgets. Um, but it's, it's not an appealing choice if people can compare what we go through here in Scarborough to what other towns go through every year. So um, I also will support it, um, not happily, but um, appreciatively of all the work that's been put into it. If there are no other questions or comments, um, all in favor of the motion? That's six. Thank you. And we have a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Six. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.